Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dell, and as we are wrapping up the heroic week of the Season 1 Content War, we're then heading into the Mythic Week. We're seeing a number of class changes on the horizon, primarily to help out with the endgame tuning and endgame balancing. With some of the underrepresented, underused specs, and even hero talent combinations getting a little bit of love as of this recent update, with a couple of the overrepresented playstyles on anything that is a little bit broken, a little bit too strong, or performing above everybody else in pvp or pve content seeing some reductions as well it's a long video with a fairly sizable update so i want to jump into this as soon as possible we'll have a separate pve section as well as a pvp section to cover which will have chapter marks for the video just to make sure that you can skip around and get to the classes you're the most interested in and with that being said if you want to see more regular updates like these for the war within be sure to follow the channel and subscribe otherwise let's dive right in so as part of this update, we actually first are going to see a wide variety of trinket changes, particularly of this trinket list we're seeing there for some of the more popular trinkets like the Arakara Sagbrood trinket, slightly reduced. The Spy Master's Web from the Raid, the Intellect Onyx effect, slightly reduced. The Shadow Binding Ritual Knife from Dells, which provides quite a bit of primary stats, which I actually got lucky enough to get as a map on my Rogue, also being a little bit reduced. Though a good swath of all the other trinkets are being buffed up. Plus, there also notice that a lot of the Dove trinkets are just not performing exactly where they want them to be, or at least those trinkets are not as competitive or at least close to being competitive to raiding trinkets or dungeon trinkets so to make delvers happier they are also going to be doing a bit more tuning for the delve trinkets so expect for a lot of the delve gear to potentially be better than before so don't throw it away just yet for the seasonal trinkets that are going to be available in season one mythic plus dungeons hold on to the trinkets in case they actually become a little bit better of an upgrade overall to your character as for the class changes we have a variety of pve specific changes and pvp changes first we'll go over the dungeon and raid changes that will affect with every single class though a good portion of this is just the retuning or rebalancing where we're seeing buffs to some of the underperforming or underplayed playstyles but also them dampening a little bit anything that's been overrepresented some things such as death knights or at least unholy and blood are not really playing some land as much so some land for this purpose gets a little bit better buffs the proc rate to actually proc the Vampiric Strike ability, the prime core ability of Sun Lan, has been increased to 25% up from 10 in order to give you a little bit more consistency on the usages of Vamp Strike. Frenzy Bloodthirst, which buffs the damage of your Death Call and Death Strike per stack, has actually been improved just a little from a 4% stacking damage increase to a 5% stacking increase. When you play around the main class ability or spec ability, Visceral Strength grants you additional strength. This has been increased from 6% to 8%. And for Blood Deathlings in particular, Vamp Strike is just not performing nearly as well as it could be, so they're buffing its damage by 20%, while also allowing the Talent of Infliction of Sorrow for Blood DK to erupt 15% of leftover dot damage on the target instead of 10, which is overall going to incre increase the overall effectiveness of some lane for Blood just by a little bit. As for the Spectre Demon Hunter, we're primarily seeing some fixes for the I-Beam ability, though these sound pretty sizable. First of all, they fixed an issue that caused I-Beam damage to be reduced beyond one target instead of beyond five targets. So if you were hitting two or three or four targets, you actually were dealing a little bit less damage on your Demon Hunter for one reason or another. So that's a damage gain in smaller group content. They also fixed an issue that prevented I-Beam from benefiting from other talents such as Isolated Prey which allows normally I-Beam to deal 30% more damage, so you're missing out on quite a bit of that single target damage. With Chaotic Disposition, your Chaos abilities have a chance to occur again, and it's like a 7.7% .7 chance to do 70% more damage of up to 70% additional times, and I-Beam is a pure Chaos ability, and it wasn't getting any value from Chaotic Disposition, so even though they're just buffing one simple ability for the spec of Demon Hunter, for having Demon Hunter specifically, I think it'll actually have a bit of a cascading effect, resulting in a little bit of a damage increase. From there, we've seen a couple of more changes, primarily targeting the class of Druid, starting with Balance, which hasn't been performing nearly as well as it could be, so they're amping them up by a little. All ability damage, all basic abilities have been increased by 6%. The damage of your Star Surge ability is being amplified by 16%, which is a pretty big core single target damage and ability. And Starfall has also been increased by 20%, though Starfall damage specifically does not apply to PvP content. Everything else does, however. And if you are playing your Boomkin as a Loon's Chosen with the Lunar Calling, 
Lunar Calling will increase Starfire's damage to its primary target by 80% instead of 65%, so even more single target damage if you're going for cleave based gameplay. This bonus does not really get applied for PvP though. So for Balanced Druids, it's not a crazy amount of changes, it's just very core, basic abilities that are getting amplified, though a good portion of Boomkin changes will be arriving during the 20th update, or 20th anniversary update, I guess I should specify. So if you take all these buffs, combine them with some of those upcoming PTR changes that are going to be coming to life sometime soon, this actually should be a pretty decent combination of some new stuff coming to the spec of balance specifically. The balance is not the only spec that's getting some new changes, as Feral Druids are also getting a couple of little adjustments here and there. First of all, talents such as Blood Talents and Alliance Strength will no longer function with Rampant Ferocity, which is kind of how Feral Druids cleave right now. By using Bites, they also deal additional damage per combo point to all targets afflicted by a Rip. This is actually in response to player feedback, so the change reduced the value of maintaining Rip on targets constantly, and also complicated the usage of Blood Talents in AoE. So they're actually changing up, so it no longer does scale with the damage of Rampant Ferocity. And on top of it, Feral is getting more buffs with a 3% damage buff, nothing super crazy. Rip damage increase of 8 6%, so that's going to be something solid. First, Bite damage is increased by 3%, again, nothing to write home about. And Feral Frenzy damage, almost got the wrong ability, getting amped by 10%, which is a solid bit of single target output. Also, as a Druid of the Claw, you get a 3% damage buff towards your Ravage ability, so nothing insane, but nice to see Feral Druids, which are not often well represented as a spec, seeing a few buffs here and there. I guess not represented, I meant to, for it for PvE content. They've actually have been getting quite a decent bit of play for PvP, however, which is always exciting to see. From there, we got a slight adjustment for Restoration Druids, another spec, just like Boomkin, that's receiving even more changes with the 20th anniversary, though not quite yet. None of these changes are in the game yet at the moment, though all healing is being amped by 8% to improve their raid viability. This healing does not get buffed off for PvP, only for PvE content, but also you have some damage buffs for some of your basic casting abilities, such as your Wrath, as well as your Star Surge and your Starfire. All of them increased by 20%. So if you want to play more of a caster focused rest of druid or at least hit enemies from a distance from safety, you are not as forced to play completely into the feral druid cat weaving gameplay if you don't want to do that. And from there, we got the spec of the Devastation Evoker, which is getting a slight few buffs here and there. First of all, the basic ability of Disintegrate is seeing a 10% damage buff. This is kind of exciting, especially as Scale Commander, since that ability can cleave multiple targets. So it is a single target increase, but potentially a decent cleave and multi-target damage increase there too. But also Eternity Surge, which can cleave or hit a single target and can be amplified by other talents as well, like Eye of Infinity for even more additional primary damage. This talent is also being amplified by 10%. Nothing crazy, but just a few more buffs for Devastation Evokers. From there, we have the class of Mage, where we are seeing some nerfs for a very specific place still of Arcane and some buffs for the spec of Fire. For Arcane in particular, it's Sun Fury. It's been a very popular build since the late stages of Beta, and they continue to nerf it, but it just continues to rise like a Phoenix from Ashes. Uh, but I guess it never really hits Ashes, it's just a Phoenix that keeps on growing, rather, because it just feels like it continues to get more powerful and powerful. So they're reducing some aspects of this playstyle specifically, such as Glorious Incandescence, with, which procs you four meteorites that hit your target. The meteorite damage for Arcane Sun Fury in particular is being reduced by 15%. And Burden of Power damage bonus for Arcane Blast is reduced to 20% from 30%, and bonus for Arcane Barrage also reduced from 30% to 20%, which I guess is going to affect all aspects of Arcane, both single target as well as its cleave AoE with a Barrage ability. Though as Arcane seen some nerves, Fire gains additional buffs, they've been really going back and forth with the ability of Lit Fuse, and really more importantly, Living Bombs. Like, there was some issues with Living Bomb causing performance issues with so many different explosions erupting, like literally tanking your FPS in big dungeon content and they tried buffing the damage of lit fuse but limiting it and then nerfing it and a lot of little things back and forth and it's just very dramatic for a talent where you could have quite a lot of talents to buff it and have it do no damage which is essentially where we got to initially with lit fuse so they're changing it a little bit living bomb's visual will now only play on the first unit that it strikes rather than each unit damaged by the explosion so i guess i'm trying to fix some of the performance issues they're buffing the damage of the fire mage by six percent 
and their buff and living mob back up by 25%. A while ago, they buffed it by 100%. Then they nerfed it by 75%, and then now they're buffing it back up, and I feel like it's maybe about exactly where it used to be at some point in its peak, so maybe they're bringing fire back just a little bit more. But we'll know that for sure if fire is really back once the Season 1 of Mythic Plus is finally in full swing. From there on though, we do have some more healer buffs with the Mistweaver's healing being improved by 3%. Nothing crazy, but there's a nice new improvement if you enjoy the Fistweaver playstyle with Ancient Teachings. These effects don't affect PvP aspects of Mistweaver, but both Tiger Palm as well as Rise of Sun Kick damage is being increased by 15%. Again, nothing crazy, but the fact that both of those abilities can do quite a bit of damage and some of them can actually cleave multiple targets, it is going to improve the melee healing gameplay or at least the melee healing passive healing that they're able to do to their allies as for the speck of woodwalker no big nerfs but they are changing darting hurricane a little bit they're actually reducing the passive trigger proc rate for this talent by 50 percent so you're not going to get as many procs of darting hurricane and it also now reduces the global cooldown of the affected ability by 0.25 seconds instead of half a second then we have the spec of holy paladin which is actually the first healer that's getting a nerf by six percent it's crazy shocking it's a very very little number most of you holy paladins are not going to notice it but yeah, I think if you are trying to find more competitive raid spot, having your class get nerfed right before Mythic season or Mythic raiding season and Mythic plus season begins is not ever gr a great feeling, but 6% overall healing nerf, which isn't too much. Though damage wise, you are getting amped up by quite a bit. Abilities such as Judgment, abilities such as Crusader Strike, all are amped up by 60%. Even Hammer of Wrath improved by 20%. And you would think that, oh, okay, so maybe they were trying to get him to go more melee healing paladin. So with these damage improvements, maybe a Venture Crusader could be back on the table. But they're actually nerfing Venture Crusader to match the, the damage increases. So instead of having a 420% of the damage being done, turn into a healing split evenly amongst your allies it is instead being reduced down to 260 percent of overall healing so it's kind of matching it i guess if you're not playing into a melee healer paladin i guess if you are playing melee healer paladin nothing really changes for you too much but if you are playing more of a caster paladin you're just simply getting more free damage or at least more passive damage so i guess it gives you a little bit more build variety but still brings up the damage of holy paladin just a little Lastly, Holy Prism, which is on the same row as Barrier of Faith, is getting a bit of an improvement where its single target damage has been increased by 100%, while its area of effect damage is being increased by 50%, which will hopefully make it a little bit better compared to Barrier of Faith, especially if you pick up uh, playing the playstyle of Herald of the Sun. Speaking of the Herald, specifically for Attribution Paladin, Herald of the Sun's Dawn Light damage, which has recently been adjusted for Retribution Paladin to finally scale with their mastery, which greatly improves its overall value. And actually, a good portion of the Herald of the Sun kit now finally properly scales with the Retribution Paladin mastery, which it directly buffs the damage of all of your holy abilities. Very solid mastery. That being said, Dawn Light is being uh, downgraded by like 15%, just a little bit might not be enough to make it worse it's really hard to tell this early on because tuning against the final they could add additional numbers right before the release but yeah herald of the sun has seen a surge in popularity and they're bringing it down just a little bit overall for red pallies then we have the spec of Shadow Priest specifically, with all of its damage being improved by 6%. Though they're doing a little bit of tuning with your Psychic Link, where Psychic Link overall cleave damage has been downgraded a little bit from a 30% cleave damage to all targets afflicted by Vampiric Touch down to 25%. But your base single target damage has been improved by 6%, so it's a slight better output in pure single target situations. From there on, we have the spec of Outlaw Rogue actually getting some changes. And while for the most part, we've been seeing buffs after buffs for numerous numbers of classes, we actually seen some nerfs for the spec of Outlaw Rogue, sorta. So I was kind of expecting for them to potentially buff Subtlety and Assass, but instead they're nerfing Outlaw by a little. So overall, all ability damage for Outlaw has been reduced by 4%, which is a decent nerf. The damage of your primary, or I guess depending on situation, primary finisher of dispatch is nerfed by 10%, also a bit of a downgrade. And your auto attack damage has been nerfed by 8% as well, so it's overall single target damage increases, but oh, oh, reductions rather, but also AoE reductions, because the way Outlaw plays in AoE is, you basically do single target damage, and while you have the buff of Blade Flurry, 
which you can maintain almost at all times and refresh it if it's about to fall off, you cleave to all enemies around you based on your single target damage. So by reducing the single target, you're actually also reducing the area away. So it's kind of a downgrade in that department. Though where there are improved outlaw is in its tier set, which has been laughably bad for a good bit. So first of all, the increase in the two set bonus where center strike, pistol shots, and ambushes will have a higher chance to proc ethereal rampage which causes those abilities to deal even more damage. So it's a 35% chance to proc the bonus and 30% increased damage as shadow damage. So you should hopefully be seeing the proc of two set more consistently, where your tier set is actually going to be at least doing something rather than barely anything. And then your four set, which directly plays off of your two set, where Ethereal Rampage, when it procs, it barely procs the 20%, so 35 is a little bit better. But when it does proc, it increases the damage between the eyes, stacking up to three times. So they're actually improving both aspects of that. They're increasing it from a 6% stacking buff to a 15. That's nice. And they're allowing it to stack up to four times instead of three times, which is also very, very nice. Potentially allowing your Between the Eyes ability to deal up to, mm, rough math, 60% more damage, possibly? Which could be very, very good. Overall, it's a way to bring down Outlaw a little, but bring up its tier set, so it kind of tries to cancel each other out. It does reduce uh, overall effectiveness of Outlaw Rogue a bit. So I wonder which one of the Rogue specs will actually come out on top after this set of changes and potentially even more stuff that we could see before the Tuesday reset. From there, we get to move on to the class of Shaman, which has been incredibly fun for me to play. Probably my favorite alt whenever I'm not spending time on my main. But we've seen changes to specs like Enhancement, where they're seeing all damage increase by 4%. Nothing crazy. However, then they're also doing a pretty sizable change with Witch Doctor's Ancestry. Normally, this... Uh, Normally, this talent will increase the chance for you to gain a stack of Maelstrom by 4%, and whenever you do gain a stack of Maelstrom weapon, you reduce the cooldown of Pharaoh Spirits by 2 seconds. So they're actually taking that and they're cutting it down from 2 seconds cooldown reduction down to 1. This is actually part of a bigger overall holistic change that we're seeing for the 20th anniversary, and they're bringing that in a lot earlier into the live realms. This is obviously going to create a bit of a friction for enhancement as you are going to noticeably summon less Feral Spirits regularly and benefit from Maelstrom generation that those Spirits provide more regularly. So this one is actually going to be a very, very noticeable change overall. The tier set, which I don't really know if it'll make up for these changes, they are increasing it a little bit. They're allowing the tier set 2 set bonus to increase the damage of Storm Strike, Lava Lash, Ice Strike, and Crash Lightning by 10% instead of 6%, which I don't really make really, I don't think I don't think it really makes up for the reduction in how many feral spirits you can have out as enhancement, because enhancement has been actually a very, very fun playstyle and been a very potent option so far. So it looks like they're gonna be downgrading just a bit. Lastly, while your Restoration Shamans are not seeing too many changes in terms of the overall healing, they are receiving a bit of a boost towards their damage. So passive damage sources such as your Lava Burst, your Lightning Bolt, or even your Chain Lightning. Spells you cast whenever you don't need to heal an ally immediately. All of those are being amplified by 12%, which would hopefully result in a little bit more overall passive damage and single target output for Resto, uh, in content like Mythic Plus Dungeon specifically. From there, we have the class of the Warlock, where we're seeing some actually kind of sizable changes coming to the specs, but in very, very specific abilities. So for Demonology in particular, Demon Bolt, a very core ability, is being amplified by 20%. That's quite a bit of single target damage increase all on its own. If you are playing around with the Pact of Erid Rune, where Dooms explode and have a chance to summon a Doom Guard, that Doom Guard's damage is being improved by 45%. Speaking of demons though, your main Felguard pet also sees a 50% damage increase, which is a decent bit of core of your overall damage, whether he's doing single target or potentially cleaving enemies with AoE. So that's a nice bit of like uh, overall damage increases for some of the basic and most important core abilities. The other aspect that's also seen a few improvements is destruction in particular. All ability damage has been improved by 6%. Love to see it. Dimensional roof damage has been improved by 40%. So players that do dungeons and raids are kind of lukewarm about this, but all the PvPers are excited because it's actually an ability used pretty regularly. And channel demon fire has been improved by 40%, which may make it a 
possible staple going forward for Mythic Plus situations. As the final class for the PvE section of this video, we have some adjustments to the class of Warrior, starting with some of the hero spec changes, which are going to impact multiple specs, like Colossus, which impacts arms as well as protection. First of all, Mountain of Muscle and Scars has been improved a little bit, so instead of dealing 4% more damage and taking less damage, you also deal 5% more damage instead. A very small adjustment, but it is a welcome one either way. Then also, the damage dealt by the Demolish ability has multiple effects or multiple strikes for this ability, with a couple of entry hits and then a final big one to follow up afterwards. Those entry to initial strikes have been increased by 20%, Nothing crazy, but it does make Demolish as a, as a full-on package, the ability, just a little bit better as a Colossus. From there, we also have the Mountain Thane, where we see the nature damage and effects of this playstyle, such as Thunder Blast, Lightning Strikes, and Ground Current, all damage increased by 6%. Nothing really going to change for protection warriors that are running Mountain Thane. They kind of like the playstyle as is, so it's even better. But they're trying to make it a little bit better for Fury, it seems, or at least make it a bit more of a competitive option. But speaking about spec specific changes, both Arms and Fury are receiving a bit of a nerf towards the Bladestorm ability. This is not only a nerf to Arms and Fury, but specifically a nerf for Slayer, which interacts directly with the Bladestorm ability. So they're reducing the overall cleave and AoE damage of either one, because Bladestorm becomes a much more impactful skill as Slayer. For Fury in particular, we also are seeing a slight nerf towards the Odin's Fury ability as well. So this will impact how good Fury can do when it comes to big group wide damage to enemies how like how you can cleave them down super fast immediately within a few seconds so a burst aoe that's part of the fun of fury has been downgraded a little bit i don't think they're killing off by any measure but they're definitely making it a little bit less severe i guess the best way to put it i mean it's a nerf right who doesn't who who likes nerfs and no matter how much is sugar-coated there isn't much that's going to change here it is a nerf which is not that fun to see I was kind of hoping to be able to have some fun of my Fury Warrior, one of the later classes that I'm still trying to level to max level, especially with Season 1 and so much to do right now on Olds, but I digress. So they are trying to make the Mountain they play style just a little bit better for Fury in particular. With the talent Strength of the Mountain will now increase the damage of Rampage and Bloodthirst by... 20% instead of 15%, but still Mountain Thane, at least in early numbers, doesn't seem like it'll be a comparable option to Slayer yet, it's just a reduction to a popular build, but it doesn't really change the, or at least it doesn't shift the dynamic to the point where now Mountain Thane is a viable option, though maybe somebody will figure out a build, or maybe they'll do a bit more tuning in the future to make Mountain Thane a little bit more playable, because it's overall a very, very fun build and fun playstyle that's visually appealing, but numerically right now is just not quite there. From there though, we do have a PvP specific section, so all of the other class changes that we talked about so far, those are going to apply for classes within dungeons, delves, raids, and open world. These are going to be specifically PvP changes that will impact our classes in different ways, within war mode, battlegrounds, or arenas, starting with the spec of Frost Death Knight in particular, because Frost Death Knight's Frost Fever damage is actually being reduced by, or at least it's rather no longer being increased by 25%. So you are seeing a bit of a reduction there, which was kind of fun to have a combo with Wither in a way where that, that damage was a little bit more aggressive. Also, Death Knights that are playing Rider of the Apocalypse, those Riders are very effective, aren't they? Well, all this Rider's Horseman's A talent is actually going to be reduced in effectiveness by 50% within PvP combat, which is where your Horseman will often cast Anti-Magic Shell on themselves as well as on you, so a little bit less protection against magic damage specifically. For Demon Hunters, the damage of the Hunt ability is being reduced by 15% within PvP. Which sounds like a nerf, but it's a little bit deceptive. Because previously, this damage was nerfed by 28%. So they're kind of scaling back the nerf from 20%, 28% reduction up to 15%. So you're actually gaining a bit of damage on the ability of Hunt than before. Specifically, the damage as well as the damage over time. So both components of this ability are actually getting a bit better for PvP. Next, we have the class of the Evoker, where the disintegrate damage of this playstyle is no longer being increased by 20%. So it's, I guess, a 20% reduction or removal of a buff, which I guess you could look at it as a nerf either way, though. And also, the self-healing, or rather the healing of your party as a Healy Preservation Evoker with Living Flame healing reduced by 20% in PvP. So a little bit of healing reduction for 
Prez in a very specific ability and a bit less damage for all three specs of the evoker in general. Now another spec that you might have not seen in PvP in a good bit is Beast Mastery, which are actually getting a bit of loving as of this week, with the kill command ability improved by 15%, Cobra Shot buff by 15%, Barb shot damage further increased by 20% and the kill shot damage improved by 40%. So hopefully we'll see some beast mastery hunters running about, not just marksmanship hunters or even survival hunters out there. So BM is seeing a bit of improvement as of this build. For monks, we've seen a mixed bag of changes like with the Mist Weaver, specifically when you play the talent of Peace Weaver. Peace Weaver talent is going to now reduce the cooldown of revival by 30 seconds instead of 60 seconds. So you won't be able to use the ability or revival as aggressively. For the spec of Windwalker Monk, we are seeing a burst damage increase actually. Communion of the Wind, which buffs the effectiveness of your Strike of the Wind Lord, which increases damage by 100% previously was reduced in pvp combat by 50 percent not reduced anymore so quite a bit of additional damage for the strike of the wind lord ability however if you are playing a shadow pan type of wind walker i've seen a lot of condo and celestials but a few shadow pan monks have been able to cheese out a bit of damage with wisdom of the wall specifically one of the buffs for wisdom of the wall allows the flurry strikes to deal additional shadow damage to all uncontrolled enemies within six yards this shadow damage in particular can actually spike players out of left field so they're reducing that shadow damage component specifically for pvp by 50%. So they're kind of trading in one burst for the other. So you're not playing Shadow Pan for this RNG burst, but are getting more dedicated burst combos with Communion of the Wind. So I think that just makes Condo Celestials with its bursty Celestial Conduit ability just a little bit better than before. When it comes to PvP for the spec of Holy Paladin, we're seeing slight adjustments like with the talent of Sanctified Plates. Sanctified Plates now increases your armor by 20%. Stamina by 10% and area effect damage by 6% or damage area effect damage reduction by 6% while within PvP combat. So it's actually a bit of a survivability increase. And on top of it, Divine Protection Damage Reduction bonus is being increased by 50% also within PvP. So quite a bit of a defensive increase for Holy Paladins in particular. Subtlety Rogues playing around the talent of Echo and Ripperman, specifically when playing around the Reverberation talent, which increases the damage of Echo and Ripperman by 100%. They're actually reducing that increase in PvP from a 100% increase down to a 70% increase within PvP combat. And with this week's reset, especially for the PvP season, you might want to pick back up for your Enhancement Shaman within PvP combat because they're getting buffed all across the board. Abilities like Storm Strike are being amped by 20% in PvP. Wind Strike from your Ascendance ability also amped by 20%. Your Ice Strike ability buffed by 40% as well as Frost Shock, which can synergize with the ability of Ice Strike, which buffs it directly so you can have quite a bit of cleave and single target damage. Even Fire Nova, if you do end up playing for like more of a cleave flame shock playstyle, maybe in RBG content or solo BG solo RBGs, then Fire Nova also gets a 40% damage increase there. And your basic ability of Lava Lash also being improved by 20% on top of it. And that's quite a few core abilities that can then be stacked up with other passive buffs in order to further amplify the damage of all of these effects. And while some classes are receiving buffs, classes such as Warlocks are not so lucky. Warlocks so far have been uh, actually kind of scary within PvP, especially the spec of Affliction. So maybe basic combat abilities such as your Corruption has been reduced by 10% within PvP. Shadow Ball damage has been reduced by 15% in PvP. And this is a very nice synergy with Soul Harvest, which could deal some really spiky damage with those Shadow Bolts and guaranteed Nightfall procs, which could be also quite terrifying with talents such as Withering Bolt, further amplifying it by quite a bit. The damage of Unstable Affliction is being reduced by 30% in PvP, but also apparently Unstable Affliction's backsplash damage, so when you do end up dispelling it, it deals a million damage back to the target, to the dispeller, and silencing them. That damage is also being reduced by 25% within PvP. If you play a Warlock as a Hellcaller, the damage of Wither, which is basically like an improved version of Corruption, also sees a 10% damage reduction. And for Soul Harvester, the talent of Necrolite Teachings will now increase the damage of Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul by 10%, within PvP instead of by 20%. Then for the spec of destruction, we're actually seeing a bit of a correction in a different angle, with your Chaos Bolt primary ability improved by 15% within PvP. 
Things such as incinerate your basic combat ability also further improve by 15% and even soul fire which can really proc with a ton of damage with decimation can really let you get, unleash quite a bit of burst damage very rapidly. Also a 15% damage buff there as well. Though decimation does see a bit of reduction as of this build though which reduces the casting of soul fire by 60% instead of 80% so maybe there's a chance somebody will be able to interrupt a quick soul fire to the face though I think it'll still be a fairly fast cast ability hell color damage is destruction however is being reduced by 30 percent though which allows wither to just add a little bit extra sustain damage giving destro a bit more of this uh instantaneous dot aspect but also changing your emulation from something you need to cast to put on a target which is part of that pvp gameplay of you have to get this dot on a target instead you can just make an instant cast and spread it to multiple targets which destruction was not i guess to some degree baseline designed around that mechanic. So Hell College is doing, I guess, a lot of damage, so that's being reduced by 30% in PvP. Kind of a hefty nerf there. Though as a Diabolus, there is even more incentive to play Diabolus as Destro now, especially with the Ruination ability. Whenever you summon your Pet Lord after you rotate through all of your rituals, that Ruination ability damage is being improved by 15% in PvP, so a bit more burst in order to be able to capitalize on a target and just hit him with a big old Chaos Meteor from the sky. But also, I guess you should also add that Pet Lord is also doing quite a bit of damage on his own too, so it's kind of a nice little combo, but it does make it a bit more burst here of a setup. So with that being said, that's going to be literally the entirety of all of the different class changes that are arriving very soon to the War Within Live Realms. But as always, I do want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this update, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it or found this update informative, go ahead and give it a like, I would very, very much appreciate it. Join our Discord community if you want to discuss some of these upcoming class changes further. And always, let me know all your thoughts in the comments down in the description of this video. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.